Now, there were some other disciples in the boat, trying to watch all of this as they struggled to keep the boat afloat. We wondered why Peter got out of the boat to go to Jesus. I wonder why the others didn't. Why didn't they leap out of the boat in the darkness of night with a storm raging all around them? Why didn't they approach what looked like a ghost floating across the water, heading directly toward them, claiming to be Jesus? The simple answer could be that they were reasonable, rational people. And jumping out of a boat under these circumstances made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Or maybe they were just scared. Petrified by fear, unable to move, hardly able to breathe, stuck huddling, huddling in a boat, hoping their lives would somehow be spared. They might have been grumbling about how they knew there had been a storm brewing before they ever left the shore. Why had they listened to Jesus? Why had they taken a boat heading for the opposite side? Why had they let themselves get into this mess, this dangerous situation threatening their very lives? Perhaps these were the responsible disciples who knew their duties, performed them well, would never abandon ship, and would work to keep it afloat so it would be ready in case Peter or anybody else needed it. I think the disciples who stayed in the boat might have been Presbyterian disciples. <laughs> Before they could do anything as radical as jumping into deep waters, especially during a storm, there would have to definitely be a committee and possibly a task force. <laughs> they would have to study this matter from every angle, come up with several viable options, evaluate each one carefully and thoroughly, choose the best option, write a detailed paper on the matter at hand, being certain to cite multiple sources of information, then formulate a plan for implementation, gather all the necessary resources, get the right person for each job, agree on a time to reassess the situation, and then, if anyone was still interested, <laughs> and if the problem still existed, move into action. Now, don't get me wrong, I like to have a lot of information before I make important decisions. I think it's crucial to study issues and decisions carefully. I do believe that quick, uninformed decisions often cause a lot of trouble that just doesn't need to happen. And while some of us are out moving and shaking the world, it's a good thing that some of the rest of us are keeping the home front strong and stable so that everyone has a place to come back to rest, to be cared for, to belong. So I don't want to be too critical of the disciples in the boat. Someone had to keep it afloat. After all, eventually Peter got back in the boat, and it's a good thing the boat was still there. If the boat sinks, there's no place to go, and sometimes you need a place to rest from the storm for a while. Even Jesus got back, got into the boat. And then the wind stopped. Perhaps it was only then, as the calm began to set in, that they began to realize who Jesus really was. Time to consider each of their own responses to Jesus. We do need the safety of the boat, a place where we belong, a place where we know we are loved, a community that embraces us and renews our spirit. But again, as our daughter says, sometimes you've just got to get wet. Sometimes Jesus is saying, come, get wet, while our committees and task forces our studying and our evaluating can sometimes become ways to keep us stuck in the boat, holding us back from the living, when the living Christ is saying, come, follow me, your life will be changed, you will be changed. We all know there are situations and issues in our denomination that have been studied to death for years and years until there is simply no more available information. Unless we want to stay stuck in the boat and stay stuck forever, at some point, on some issues, we have to agree to disagree and then find what common ground there is where we can join forces and resources and work together. We have to, have to stop holding each other captive to inertia, which paralyzes us and keeps us from moving boldly forward with God. We each need to be free to respond when God says, come, to follow where spirit leads, and to allow everyone else to be free to do the same. 
responding to God's call in their lives as they hear it, even when we don't understand, even when we disagree. For you see, while we study on and on, spending more and more money, talking and talking some more, trying to convince each other of the rightness of our own views, some have simply gotten tired of it all and have left the building. They are searching for a kind of spirituality that transforms their very being, a spirituality that leads them into deep, raging waters in order to live life to the fullest and in order to change the world. Many are longing for a spirituality that makes a difference in their lives and in the world around them, and they are not always finding it, not always finding this kind of spirituality in our churches. When God calls us and says to us, when the living Christ says to us, when Spirit says to us, come, are we ready? God's call to you may come as it did for Samuel in the middle of the night. You may hear God's call to you any time, any place. You really can't know, can't really plan for it. But you can be rather certain. God will be persistent just as God was with Samuel, calling again and again until we listen. Sometimes we are called to take a risk and jump in with excitement to discover life lived to the fullest. But even if our call seems rather ordinary to us, God still invites us to jump in, longing to learn more about life in tune with the Spirit of God. In a few minutes, many in this room will respond to God's call in their lives. Parents and a family, are being called to raise a child as a person of faith. To a child who doesn't even know it yet, God is calling, come. Discover your unique self. Grow into who you were meant to be. This congregation, on behalf of the whole church, is being called to partner with this child's family in raising her to know her true identity as child of God. God is calling others will be ordained and installed to active office in this congregation, saying, come, follow me, the living Christ, as you lead this congregation. You as a congregation are being called to the next chapter of your life together, and very soon we'll make a very, very important decision that will impact your future and mine. I have been trying to be attentive to God's call, God's next call in my life, as a family, we are seeking the direction God may be leading us for the next steps of our journey. You see, God calls each one of us, come. If you follow, you may not know where you are going. You will not know how the journey will end. But you will be transformed to the core of your being. The journey on which you embark is exciting, though intense, and sometimes dangerous. You will discover things you never dreamed, find you can do things you never imagined. With the power of God's Spirit ever present, ready to catch you if you sink, sustaining you all the way. Of course, you could end up in deep, raging waters, because sometimes you've just got to get wet.